have disobeyed, uh, but look at your neighbor and say they're still here. Uh, they've gone to jail, got out of jail, went back to jail again, uh, but look at your neighbor and say they're still here. Uh, they get in the hospital, out of the hospital, back in the hospital again, but look at your neighbor and say they are still here. That's how good God is, even when we don't do the right thing. He looks beyond our faults when our families do the wrong thing because he's trying to give them another opportunity to receive the joy of Jesus so they can turn their lives around and follow a man who is a lover of their soul. God does not hate the sinner. He hates the sin. He keeps you here because he wants you to change for the better. Just never say it's going to get better. Many of us have heard the gospel message, but still because the spirit of fear is lingering around us, we're afraid of what tomorrow may bring. We're afraid of the unknown, the uncertain. We're not sure how that thing is going to turn out. We're still waiting to hear the medical report. We're still waiting to hear from the lawyer or from the courtroom, but God is on our side. John chapter 20 records the resurrection account of Jesus' appearance to Mary Magdalene. The Bible tells us that Jesus had healed Mary Magdalene and cast out and away from her seven demons. She had been hurt and oppressed by those in her past, but Jesus had turned her life around, and she is the first woman that appeared at the tomb. Peter and the beloved disciple return home. Mary remains at the tomb in chapter 20, verses 10 through 18. She's found weeping. Don't your neighbor say weeping. The Bible says weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. While she is weeping, it's still dark. The sun has not come up yet. It has not been the beginning of the sunrise service, but her tears are of grief and indignation. She has saw Jesus suffer among the chief priests and the scribes. She had seen, saw him receive 39 lashes and a crown of thorn on his head and even being mocked and spitting upon by the Roman soldiers. She had pain in her heart because they had taken away her Lord, the one that was her Jehovah Jireh, her provider, the Jehovah Nisi her banner, her healer had been taken away and so she came to the tomb not to see a risen Jesus but to see his body how many of you know that even as a believer we still carry some doubts and some unbelief Jesus had told them that he would rise again her master has been put to death before her eyes and now there's a new problem his body has disappeared. Look at your neighbor and say, where is Jesus? Many of us are looking for Jesus in people first, but instead we should be looking for him in the word of God. Because it's in his words and through his preaching and his teaching that there is fullness of joy. How do we know that the word says in your presence there's fullness of joy at your right hand are blessings evermore. Touch your neighbor and say, I've been in his presence. When you have been in his presence, you understand that you ain't got to come to church on Easter Sunday to worship God. But because you are in church on Easter Sunday, you might as well worship Him in spirit and in truth. Her tears are of grief and in the nation. Her master has been put to death before her eyes and now his body has disappeared. Looking into the tomb, Mary sees two angels. Can I preach that for a while? This represents the mercy seat because in the Ark of the Covenant of the ancestors there was a wooden box of acacia wood that was covered by gold on the outside and they put the tablets of stone and the law of Moses. Moses' rod and bits and pieces of the blessings of the manna that God had now given the children of Israel. But now the new manna was coming out of the grave and the angels did not leave the old mercy seat. They were now sitting on the new mercy seat. Touch your neighbor and say, Lord have mercy. 
He was on, the angels were sitting on the mercy seat. They were dressed in white robes. She sees them and they ask her, why is she weeping? As they, as though they know something she doesn't. Turning around, she sees a man. Perhaps this man is a gardener. Some of us think Jesus is still a gardener. We don't know him when we see him and when we see him, we don't know him. But we're crying because we want him to wipe all of our tears away. And Jesus asked the same question uh, that the angels asked. He says, why are you crying? Uh, look at your neighbor and say, why are you crying? Uh, most of us are crying about stuff that we can't change uh, and we can't do nothing about. Uh, God wants us to dry our tears uh, and see that he's standing right there uh, ready to say that I am alive and well. Standing nearby, Jesus asked the same question, why are you crying? But he's not the gardener. Just me say, he's not the gardener. The strangest question up to the point, why are you crying? And who is it that you're looking for? Mary's eyes are clouded by tears and her heart blinded with unbelief. She had saw a man, but she did not know that that man was the one that she was looking for. Anybody in here understand what I'm talking about when I say that we can come to church looking for one thing, but we find something else? You shouldn't be coming to church for your next Boaz or your next Ruth. You shouldn't come to church looking for your next phone number. Or your next book of and touch your neighbor and say, I'm looking for Jesus. Jesus asked the question, who is it that you're looking for? Because he was standing right there and she didn't know it. Mary's eyes are clouded by tears and her heart is blinded with unbelief. Jesus is the last person she expects to see. She doesn't recognize him until she sp he speaks her name. Touch your neighbor and say, he knows your name. In other words, when you cry to God, you ain't got to tell him all about your troubles because he knows all about your troubles. The songwriter said, he hear your faintest cry. He will answer. He knows us by name. In John 10, he said, My sheep know my voice, and no man can pluck them out of my hand. I'm so glad that I'm saved, and I'm sanctified, and Holy Ghost feel, no matter what the world may say about me, because I'm not in your hands. I'm in his hands. Touch your neighbor's house, still in his hands. My brothers and sisters, he had it fixed that way that the angels will be sitting on the mercy seat because before we understand how to tell others about Jesus, we got to understand that we're still in need of his mercy. We're still in need of his grace. We still need his covering, his understanding, his love, his compassion, his compassion, as the Jeremiah said, that fails us not. This is why we need to tell the world about Jesus. The first lesson is, is that we manage our expectations. Touch your neighbor and say, manage your expectations. See, some of us are too afraid to pray to God and ask him for some radical stuff because we're scared that God going to tell us no. We're scared that God is going to disappoint us. But he said in his word that he'll never leave us, nor forsake us. Touch your neighbor and say, manage. Verse 13 says to us, look at it closely, it says, they said to her, woman, why are you crying? Because they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have put him. That word know from the Greek is oida, which means realize perceive or possess information about. See, the problem is is that anxiety has entered into our situation. It has settled in our hearts. Well, there may not be an issue with us. It's about somebody that we love. It's an issue of somebody that we care for deeply. And we're concerned because God knows something that we do not know. Isn't it funny how the angels knew who Mary was and 
Jesus knew who Mary was, but Mary was so filled with grief that she didn't even know who she was. My brothers and sisters, that's what anxiety and grief will do. It will have you in a place where you're worried about stuff that you don't even know that you're worried about it because you don't understand that God has already worked that thing out. That's why I got to be careful about who I hang around in the season of my life where I really need to hear from God because we got too many people who ain't got no prayer life that are blocking our path and their expectations are out of order. It ain't no sense folk come looking for something from God and they don't want to do what he already told them to do. He didn't tell them to come to the grave to anoint his dead body. He didn't tell them to bring spices. He didn't say, meet me at the tomb and wonder how you're going to roll the stone away. He said that in three days, it destroyed this temple, and in three days, I will raise it up. My brother and sister, she was not expecting to see a living Jesus. She was expecting to see a dead Jesus. And this is why I, when I used to listen to rap music, there was a song by Dawes of Vex that said, you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Just never said you better check yourself. Many of us speak out of turn, we act out of turn because uh, we do not know how to manage and practice self-control. Uh, our expectations are out of order uh, because we have not really prayed. Uh, we think prayer is telling God about a problem we have uh, or the tears that's rolling down our face uh, or a pain we feel. Uh, but we had died on the cross for nobody. Uh, we ain't took 39 lashes for nobody. Uh, and the things that we go through uh, are things that we went through because we did what we wanted to do and not what God wanted to do and he's telling us that we need planning she did not know that it was Jesus many of us think that we are God's right hand and we don't even know God many of us think the church is going to close its doors the moment we die but die and see what happens they're going to roll you down this aisle. Some people that really don't even like you are going to tell some lies over you. They're going to roll you back out here and take you to Rest Haven or the Green Memorial Gardens or burn you up and put you on somebody's shelf. And the next Sunday, we're going to have church. She had the wrong expectations. She came to the grave looking for a dead Jesus. But now she was talking to a living Jesus. Secondly, after we manage our expectations, we need to meet Jesus with exhortation. Look today, we say you still got time. Verse 16 says, Jesus said, Mary. He started a conversation with her. She still didn't know who he was. But when he called her name, she was able to meet the risen Savior. This is a different Jesus. This is not the same Jesus as the one that walked on the water. This is not the same Jesus that was on the Mount of Olives and, and preached a sermon on the Mount. This is not the same Jesus that was transfigured before him. This is a Jesus that still had nail scars in his hands, but he had the power of heaven and hell and the grave on his side. This is why we can't recognize the risen Savior, because we want Jesus to work magic tricks like he did at Cana. We want Jesus uh, to fix it like he did uh, for blind Bartimaeus. We want Jesus uh, to spit in mud and rub it on our eyes uh, and make everything all right. Uh, but what he's trying to get us to understand uh, is that the risen Savior has all power. Uh, the Savior before the grave uh, has some power. Uh, and that's why we don't know him uh, because we don't know the man that has all power in his hand. He has a new light about himself. He has a new countenance about himself. He is not just Savior. He is also Lord over death, hell, and the grave. And now that she's ready to meet him, now that he has called her by name, she calls him Rabboni. That word Rabboni means great 
my master, my teacher. In Hebrew, there were three levels of teachers. Somebody that was an ordinary rabbi, they were a novice or an apprentice teacher. Then there was another level when they became one that had a certain set of disciples, perhaps 11 or 12, that were followers of their teaching. But when they became a master teacher, they were a teacher of teachers. And so therefore, Jesus was now giving us the model for the New Testament church. He was the master teacher, but he's also revealing himself to a woman who, who, thank God, was going to be a teacher of teachers. This is how the church begins to spread like wildfire by the power of the Holy Spirit, because he tells her to not cling to him because he has not ascended to the Father. The nature of Jesus being risen from the grave cannot be about physical evidence. It has to be about a spiritual relationship. You can have a YouTube video of Jesus getting out of the grave and it still ain't going to convince some devils that he is the son of God until they are ready to meet him with a heart of joy, jubilation, and exhortation. You are ready to call his name and say Jesus and demons tremble. When you got him in you, you say Jesus and scales fall off your eyes. When you call his name, you say Jesus. The devil's got to get out of the way because in that name all will bow his name is Jesus and she's meeting him with an attitude of reverence and exhortation when you understand who he is you won't be about yourself you will make it all about him and Bible scholars say that at this time, this is when she fell to her feet. And she grabbed him closely by the ankles and she cried unto him, Rap on I, which means uh, my teacher. And this is why we need to meet Jesus with ex exhortation, uh, because this is a mean world we live in. Uh, parents uh, are no longer raising their children. Babies uh, are having babies. Uh, men and women have become lovers of themselves. And the church uh, has forgotten about uh, the risen power of Jesus. Uh, and now when we hear bad news, we let the devil steal our joy. But I am a believer that if you got Jesus on the inside, no devil on the outside can steal your joy. It's one thing to hear about Jesus. But it's another thing to know Jesus. The third and last thing I got to tell you, not only do you manage our expectations, not only do you meet Jesus with exhortation, but thirdly, you got to move on with exclamation. Just neighbor say, move on. The problem with some of us is that we stay in a place of despair for too long. So glad that Joe Lagan in the mighty clouds of joy, they had this song that said, I've been in the storm too long. Look at verse number 18 as it says, Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And as she told them what he said to her, and if you miss verse 17, let me tell you what he said. He said, don't cling to me. He said, for I am not yet ascended to the Father. He said, but go to my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my father and your father to my God and to your God and that's how I know how much people have been praying and staying on their knees because when trials come a believer understands that trials only come to make us strong when somebody is praising God in the midst of going through I can look at them in their trial and say, that's my God. And that's what Jesus was telling Mary. He said, this relationship that I have with God is a personal relationship. And that's what it's going to take for you to move on and tell somebody about Jesus. This thing is personal. It's more closer than your sister.
sister or your brother is closer than your mother or your father is closer than your cigarettes or your daytime TV show is closer than your email address or your password is closer than your YouTube page or your Facebook account is closer than your cell phone your MP3 your iPad and iPod and there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother and he's going to give you the power to move on don't let the devil steal your joy if you see Jesus you ought to say amen if you know he lives you ought to say amen if you know what he went through on that Friday when he went up on Calvary's here this is what they did they took him from judgment hall to judgment hall they spit on him they gave him 39 lashes they put a crown of thorns on his head they hung him high and they stretched him wide they put him on Calvin's rugged cross for your sins and for my sins he died oh yes he died it was a Friday about 3 o'clock is when he died he said father in your hands I commend my spirit he gave up the ghost and he died they took his body they put it in a grave I'm so glad the Bible says it was Joseph borrowed to because he wasn't going to need it after Sunday morning he was checking out of the grave and checking into your situation and one Friday they put him in the grave while he went in the grave he went to hell and took the keys from the devil he got up on Sunday morning with all power in his hands he said all power has been given to me in heaven and in earth is there anybody here that can see my Jesus he said why are you weeping because weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning if you got joy grab your neighbor and tell your neighbor I got joy I got joy I got real joy if you got joy get out of your seat and get on your feet and tell somebody he picked me up he turned me around he placed my feet on solid ground I got joy unspeakable I got joy unchangeable I'm gonna tell somebody that God is not dead he's yet alive he lives he lives I know he lives you ask me how I know he lives he lives down in my soul if you know him wave your hands and say yeah say yeah